Halloween has unfortunately never been a big deal out here in Scotland, and that's always bummed me out because I love Halloween. But after this year, I think I'll be happy never celebrating it again. My street and the next street over have a lot of young kids who go out trick-or-treating. So, while I was out shopping all day with my mom, we decided to pick up some sweets in case anyone came to the door. I had plans to go to the cinema to see the new Ouija movie with my friend. So, when I got home, I was getting myself ready to go out, and my mom was busy putting the shopping away. So, when the first load of kids came to the door, I was the one who had to answer it. There were children from our street, the next one over, and the next one. Some I couldn't recognize as well as an adult at the end of the path, who I guessed was either a father or an older brother. They were dressed in all black and had some sort of mask covering their face, but it wasn't anything I recognized from a movie or anything. Anyway, they had all told me their jokes and I gave them their treats as they made their way back down the path and onto the next house. I was about to close the door when I noticed that guy with the kids was still standing at the end of my path. I backed away slowly into the house as I watched him raise his hand and wave very slowly at me. I was about to call out to him when my mom came to the door to make sure I was alright, and he then took off in the opposite direction. He hadn't been with the children at all, and he left as soon as he realized that I wasn't home alone. I was completely freaked out by this and told my friend all about it when he came to the house to pick me up, but I quickly forgot all about it when we were watching the movie. When I finally got home, it was getting really late and trick-or-treating was well over at this point. I got inside and my mom was just getting ready to take the dogs out for a walk so that they could go do their last minute business and that they would meet my dad on his way home from work, so I was going to be home alone. Anyway, so I was then home alone and grabbed some snacks and went up to my bedroom and onto my computer so that I could finish up some of my writing. After my first creepy encounter with the guys coming into my house and into my backyard, my dad then brought a motion sensor light and attached it to the wall of our house right outside my window. Normally, it will go off whenever a cat walks along our fence, but it will usually go off after a couple of minutes. I always know when the light has to come on because it lights up my whole room given where it's placed, and while I'm sitting at my computer, the light then came on. I felt my blood run cold when I looked out and saw the creep from hours before sitting on the fence waving at my window to keep the light on. Luckily, I heard the front door open and my parents coming into the house with the dogs, so I rushed down the stairs and started screaming at them about the guy on the fence. My dad didn't question me. He just took the dogs and rushed through the house, threw the back door open and ran outside, and then I heard him shouting, Get the hell out of here, you creep. I'm going to phone the police. My dad scared him off, but I convinced him not to call the police because I didn't want to make the whole situation worse. I just wanted to go to sleep and forget all about the whole night. Thankfully, I haven't seen the man since. This happened when I was either 10 or 11. It was Halloween night, and to make things even better, this year it fell on a Friday. I was trick-or-treating with a friend of mine, who I will call Jane, and both her mom and my mom. Jane dressed as a birthday present, and I was Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. It was around 9, and Jane and I had collected a mountain of candy, to the point where our arms were beginning to hurt. During our trek, we came to this hill in our neighborhood, where there aren't that many houses till you get to the top. I was determined to increase my candy intake as fast as possible, so I sprinted to the top of the hill, leaving Jane and our parents behind. When I got to the top, I heard my mom yell for me to wait. I was impatient, but I still did what I was told. At about that time, a black car pulled up next to me. I can't remember what type of car it was, but it was either a Volvo or a Honda Civic. A guy who looked like he was in his late 20s or early 30s rolled down his window and said hello to me. He looked like the friendly type, so I happily said hello back. He asked me, have you gotten a lot of candy tonight? I responded, yep, and happily showed off my nearly overflowing bag. He smiled, that's awesome, can you come here and give me some candy? That's when I froze, 
My parents were the kind of people who drilled stranger danger warnings into my head and this guy may have not looked like a creeper, but all the signs seemed to be there. Even my 10 or 11 year old self could see that. At that point, I really had no idea what to do. I guess the guy saw my face because he motioned for me to come. I just want a little candy. You don't have to give me your whole bag. He said as I noticed someone on the passenger side of the car leaned forward to look at me too. They both had creepy smiles on their faces. I contemplated whether or not I should run. Luckily, about that time, my mother came running up the hill, having seen what was going on. The guy saw her too, and his face turned white. I gotta go, he said, staring at my mom the whole time, and floored the car down the road. My mom ran up to me, and I threw my arms around her, starting to cry, while Drain and her mom finally caught up. We walked back to my house. I was clinging on my mom's arm the whole time. My bag of candy was eventually able to take my mind off the situation, but I occasionally look back at it nowadays and can't help but wonder what would have happened if I've gone up to that guy's car. I thank God that I was smart enough not to do so. This happened to me when I was 24 years old while home alone, primarily on Halloween night. During this time, I was still living with my parents as I was still a college student that didn't have a job with any money. My parents had to take my younger brother who was around 10 at the time to one of his friend's Halloween parties to have their fun. I had been invited to a Halloween party myself, but decided not to go as I'd came down with a mild fever earlier that day and didn't want to risk it going back up. Therefore, I was left at home to hand out candy for the trick-or-treaters, which I didn't mind even though some kids would be annoying. Throughout the night, I'd constantly be sitting on the couch, either playing some video games or watching Netflix, and would pause it once there was a knock at the door. Fast forward to around 10pm, Halloween started to die down. People stopped answering their doors and turning off all the lights until everyone was gone. Just I was about to turn off the TV and get some shut-eye, I heard yet another knock at the door. In my mind, I thought it would be more of those pesky trick-or-treaters, but when I opened the door, I was greeted to someone who was at least 6 foot 5, definitely not a kid. They had on what looked to be a zombie mask of some type, which I must admit was pretty creepy. The design was on point and the mask seemed very well detailed. I also noticed that he had a handgun sticking out of his back pocket, but at that point, I completely dismissed it as a prop. Oh, uh, hey there, um, happy Halloween, and proceeded to grab the bowl so he could take some candy. The only problem was that he either didn't acknowledge or care about the fact that he even said anything. In fact, I noticed that he didn't even have a candy bag with him. He just stood there, motionless, slowly tilting his head to the side to, I guess, create more suspense. At this point, I'm a bit creeped out and told him that I had to go and to have a nice night, while closing the door and making sure it was locked. I looked through the people, and to my surprise, he was still standing by the stoop like a statue. I figured that it was probably some edgy teen playing a joke on people, and that he'd eventually have to leave. And he did. An hour later, my parents had returned home with my brother and I decided to call it a night as I had class early the next morning. But there was yet another knock at the door, this time much more loud. I opened it and was greeted with two police officers with very serious looks. My dad then came to the door and one of them had asked us if we had seen anyone come to our house with a mask and a concealed firearm. At first, I didn't know what they were talking about. But then I remembered about my encounter. Their description matched the person I saw almost perfectly and it was no doubt him. They went on to explain that the person I saw supposedly murdered his girlfriend and had dumped her body in a nearby lake. He was put in a mental institution a few years back and was released on quote, good behavior. My heart dropped into the pit of my stomach as they said this. A few days later, my mom found a letter in our mailbox that wasn't in any sort of envelope. Written in big bold letters were the words, You made the right decision when you locked the door.
In 2014, something happened to me on Halloween night that made me not ever want to celebrate it again. Halloween is supposed to be a fun and exciting experience that only happens once a year, and I've heard over the years that some unsettling and creepy things had happened. Kids finding sharp objects in their candy, people receiving candy only to find out they were actually drugs, and so on. Anyway, I was 10 years old and I was trick-or-treating with my two other friends under the supervision by my older brother who was 18. We had been trick-or-treating throughout the night, having a blast and enjoying ourselves. At one point, my candy bag, aka my pillowcase, was nearly filled to the brim with that addictive Halloween candy. By now, Halloween was practically dead and the neighborhood was basically a ghost town when you looked at it. My other two friends, on the other hand, wanted to go to one last house on the block that had lots of decorations indicating that there was more candy. My brother went with them while I stayed on the other side of the street, when I hear what sounds like an engine. I look to my left to see an old soccer mom car coming down the street with its headlights turned off. The car slowly crept toward me, coming to a complete stop as it pulled up next to me. A man, I'd say in his mid-thirties, rolled down the window and said the following. Hey there, hun. My son and I were trick-or-treating, and we lost our dog and can't find him. I'm sorry, but would you be my little helper and help us find him? It would really help me out. In my ten-year-old state, I assumed that he really did lose his dog, so I gladly accepted. Big mistake. As I'm walking toward the car, I notice something through the passenger side window. Let me point out that it's completely dark out, and if it wasn't for the light from the moon, I wouldn't have seen him. There were two men in the car, wearing masks, looking straight at me through the tinted windows. All of a sudden, I see my brother and my friends come my way, and I let out a sigh of relief. As soon as the men see my 6'6 six six brother, they immediately floor it down the road never to be seen again. My brother told our parents about the incident, but I don't know what happened after that. Now that I'm much more older, I became a little more wise as to what actually happened.